we are back with the supercharged s2000 build series um, we are going to be installing the fuel system and probably the link ecu the can gauge and the aem wideband sensor hopefully all today but if you are not subscribed to the channel uh, i'm going to be posting video pretty much every day this week so um hopefully i can get the kit all installed by the end of this week and maybe even have it driving next week but uh really going to be hustling on this thing and uh bringing you guys along for the ride so first thing we're going to be tackling today is the walbro 255 fuel pump and then we're probably going to be moving on to installing this can gauge go underneath the car to install the wideband and then finally probably throw the link ecu in the car um all of this kit is literally plug and play. I don't have to cut any wires. I don't have to hack up the chassis. So all this is 100% reversible. And that's what I wanted to go for, um, just in case I went another route. But um, yeah, no splicing wires, hacking up stuff, no drilling holes. Um, Science of Speed kit is really, really refined and nice for that. So let's get to it. All right, first thing to do when you are working on fuel system stuff, especially installing the injectors, is you wanna pull the fuel pump fuse, which I believe is a 15 amp under the dash. Let it run for a minute to drain everything out of the fuel rail. All right, let's see if this works. There's a 15 amp fuse under the dash. Yep, looks like that was it. Cool. This uh, fuel pump is a little bit of a pain to get out. So I had to sort of like look from the top, like this is the back window here, and uh, get to all those bolts underneath. But I think I have them all loose now. Well, that was super fun and exciting. Um, had a lot of issues trying to get this thing on. I, I don't know why. And uh, one of the pins in the original OEM connector popped out, um, but I'm hoping that it stays in place. Looks like the little clip inside of there broke. So hopefully that pin doesn't come back out. Um, and then this fuel hose they provided, I cannot get it to slip up over onto the barb there. So I just ended up reusing the OEM one, it looked okay. So should be fine. But um, yeah, I'll just keep an eye on if I have any fuel pressure issues. All right, we're all back installed. I'm gonna just try to start it up real quick. Check for leaks. I solved the cover off. Let's see. Put the fuse back in. Should take a second to prime, but it should start up. Huh, that's fun. I don't even hear the pump priming. Well, I'm an idiot. I forgot to plug in the little plug that goes into the top of the 
fuel top hat. So let's try that again. Because the pump should prime when the key is on at least. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice. Look at that. All right, so since the fuel rail is empty from pressure, I'm gonna move on to installing the fuel injectors. I have these RC750s, I believe. And then I have these little conversion plugs. Let's see, yeah, so these, so these will go from the stock Honda connectors to the EV1 style plug for the aftermarket injector. So it should all be plug and play. All right, bit of nonsense going on with these injectors. Shout out to RC for making this super complicated. So it said then there are instructions that you have to space out the fuel rail. The issue is there's studs that go between there to support the fuel rail from the factory. You can't put them on the top because then you have no threads left to actually bolt this back into place when you have the spacer on there. So I had to actually go from the bottom. In doing so, the spacers they provide are too small. So I had to drill them out a little bit and it should be sitting like this and then space it out hopefully. All right, just want to show the injector setup before I put the cover back on. See, the injectors are installed. Um, there's a little spacer uh, kind of in between there. I don't know if you can see it right where my finger is. And then there's a little spacer on the back side too, because these injectors are a little bit taller than factory, but you can see these conversion harness deals where it goes from the EV1 plug to the standard plug. And I just have them sort of zip tied out of the way and making sure that nothing gets hot wiring wise or touches anything weird. And then put this little vanity cover back on and shouldn't be able to see any of this mess. Just like that. All right, so I think I'm gonna actually pick them up on this tomorrow. I was gonna install the link gauge pod, but it looks like I have to take the dash apart to actually get to that little uh, insert and replace it. So <clears throat> kind of ran out of time today, but at least you got to see the fuel system done and uh, just taking it one step at a time. So in tomorrow's video, we're gonna be installing the link gauge, the wideband and the link ECU. So I'm gonna show you guys all that. Haven't seen too many videos on the link setup. So hope you guys are excited for that in an S2000 chassis. And uh, yeah, subscribe and stay tuned.